And what's the answer? I get asked to cough sometimes. Uh, Can you prove it? Shouting Lenny. We've already covered that. Yeah. Uh, I guess what's left is uh, someone asking me if I owe them money or not. Money. Money. So, I mean, this game's been out, what, five years now? Yeah. And it's still it's amazingly popular. We love Rockstar games. Is that weird that it just keeps coming up for you? Or are you like, yeah, I'm thrilled by it? I really, it, it, we're blessed. We truly are blessed. I did not, I mean, I remember I was involved in the first Red Dead, as you all know. I was a huge fan. Uh, but when we were working on the second one, you know, I, I was just hoping, it, as long as it's as good as the first one, you know, that, then I'll be happy. And thankfully, I, I guess it, it was, right? It was. And the fact that you guys are still coming here after, it'll be five years in October. I, that kind of blows my mind. We started, you started working on the first one in, was it 08? Yeah, 2008. I'm so fortunate, and it's, it is amazing. Thank you so much for still being here and being interested. So supportive. It's really great. We have such a great, amazing group of people that support us, and what's so cool is that you all really support each other, too, and that, that is what's really, really cool. So what's that process like for you as actors? I know it's motion capture, so it's not you in a booth not doing anything. Is it, it's actual acting. It's getting on the ground, crawling around, riding oil barrel horses and... If any of you have seen behind the scenes stuff for like Avatar and Planet of the Apes and what have you, that's the way the majority of AAA games are done now. A lot of people still call it voice acting because 10, 15 years ago, most of it was voice acting, you know? But some of the stuff we did was still in a booth. Maybe about 10% of all my work on Red Dead 2 was in a booth. But the majority of it, I was wearing spandex with all the balls on, you know, and we're running around pretending to be cowboys dressed in lycra, you know? And so it takes a lot of suspension of disbelief, if you, for lack of a better term. And, uh, you know, you get used to it after a while. You got a big helmet with a camera pointed at your face. Um, but after a while, you get used to it, and uh, I can't, I love it. I think it's a fantastic way to work, because in the morning, we'd be up in Coulter, you know, putting ankle weights on to make it look like we're treading through the snow, and then the next scene then, we're in the exact same studio, but it's just outside Saint Denis in the Swamplands, and we're swatting away at imaginary mosquitoes. So, it's a, it's a big, big test of imagination as a performer and as an actor. And we couldn't have done it without the animators. They were invaluable. They were just as important as the director in many ways, because so many times we'd just look at the scene on the page and we'd be like, what is this? And the animators would say, hey, come here, we'll show you. And we would look at a monitor and we'd go, oh, that's the environment. And it really clued in our performance, really helped us out a lot. Yeah, they, they definitely did help us so much. Um, and I want to say too, Sergio, when yesterday you mentioned uh, to Roger and I both that in the epilogue, if John drinks a little too much or whatever, and he starts to throw up, then it's actually Arthur's throwing up that you hear come out of John. And I, I really, really hope you're wrong, man, because you may not be, but when you do, it wasn't easy. You go into the sound booth for certain, you know, sound effects, right? You get punched and you or the, you know, whatever the hundreds of different noises they wanted us to do. But one of them, of course, was puking. And they gave you a trash can. They said, all right, just keep this near you. And you're like, what? What's that for? And they're like, yeah, you're going to do the, the throw up sounds now. And, and of course, to try to make that sound real, you almost end up. <laughs> <laughs> because they want, you know, they want different versions. So you do maybe, they say, can you give us like five different versions? And so you do, you know, I'm not going to do it right now. But you start, you start doing it. And they're like, all right, good, yeah, just keep going. We'll let you know when we got five good ones. So after five minutes of going, you know, doing this, you almost do puke. And I'd say some people probably have it, some yeah. But you don't need the bucket. You do need the bucket. I'm just wondering with a bottle of water, too, just to get that extra watery sound going. <laughs> so horrible. <laughs> but man, if, if they didn't use mine, I hope to God they did. I hope I they did that. too, because that would have been all for nothing then. 
And falling. Falling wasn't easy. And being on fire. That's an awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard myself scream that way. Nobody needs to hear me scream like that. You've all heard it now, Rob. No, 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 no. So on the other end, did you have to do the motion for being on fire and throwing up in the motion capture suits? Sometimes, sometimes not. You know, if it's in game, uh, they may, you know, I don't know if we did it. That's a good question, actually, because a lot of that in game stuff would have been done in the booth. But if it was a cutscene, for example, then uh, you know that was always done very similar to the way you would do it on film. But uh, all, a lot of the in-game animations we also did too, but they would be separate from each other, you know, and we would kind of do them in tandem. So falling from the, I, I, I think they used the ragdoll physics they had from the, from their engine there for that. But uh, I do remember trying to put myself out of being on fire a few times. I think, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what were some of the more fun scenes to, to shoot in motion capture? Well, for this game, um, the thing I enjoyed the most was any time we were doing something with all the gang. Because we worked on it, Red Dead 2, we worked on for five years. So we all became a bit of a gang ourselves. And uh, so whenever it was all the, the, old, the old guard back in you know, the studio, we had a lot of fun. So like rescuing Jack and bringing him back from Bronte's house. And uh, uh, when Sean, after you rescue Sean for the first time, and there's a big celebration around the campfire then. And all that was really, that was a lot of fun. Because it was all of us there, and we were sad in Lycra, you know, but pretending to be cowboys. Yeah, we looked pretty dick. <laughs> so with the motion capture helmet, no cowboy hands? No, no. Yeah. Every once in a while, Arthur would take his hat off, so we created a, a mesh hat made out of chicken wire, because the sensor still needed to be able to read the, the balls around my, you know, my neck and whatnot. So every time we did a scene, like for example, when he meets Mary for the first time, there's two versions of that scene, depending on whether or not your Arthur's wearing a hat or not. Uh, so when he sees Mary, he takes his hat off unless he's not wearing a hat, in which case he just stands there. So we did both versions, but when he had the cowboy hat on, it was mesh, so that the sensors could still work. There, for me, I mean, there were a lot of really fun things, and a lot of the scenes that were really serious, probably we had bloopers of some sort, you know, right? So even the crazy ones probably turned out to be fun, and we'd laugh about them during, during the process, but because you're, uh, doing performance capture in these suits, they can make your avatar look like anything. <laughs> and so there, there was a day where, I don't even know, like you run into these wolf people at a certain point. Like, the night folk? Night folk. Yeah. I was a night folk. Was I was one of the guys that had been running around. <laughs> and I was like, what is, what is this anyway? You know, and they're like, can you just look a little more, uh, a little more wolfish? <laughs> they're really spooky. They're quiet. They just sneak up on you. Don't <laughs> so me and another guy, we just ran back and forth on the stage. And I don't know if they used ours or not, but yeah, I'm, I might be one of the wolf folk. I tried to be. <laughs> Once I was a bear, and uh, I was, I, some guy was stuck in a trap, and I just had to pretend to maul him. So I was just grabbing him and shaking him as hard as I could. That was a lot of fun too. I'd love to open it up. Do you guys have any questions? If you do, raise your hand. We'll start right here. Uh, so, uh, Roger, I've heard in an interview before that you said that the five years it took to make Red Dead 2, there was days where it felt like it was going to take forever. So, was there, can you guys describe the difference between a good day on set and a bad day on set? I, there wasn't many bad days, but there were some days that, that were long, you know, because uh, we had to get it right, and you know, sometimes there's difficulties and whatnot. So typically, you know, when we were working in mocap, we would drive out to Long Island, and we would work for three weeks, and they would typically be between 12, 14 hour days, uh, sometimes a little longer. But you know, th looking back on it now, you know, maybe it's just rose tinted goggles with the past, but there really wasn't any bad days, to be honest with you. You know, every once in a while, we worked with so many different actors too, I think it was close to a thousand, just with the mocap section alone. And everyone was fantastic. You know, for the most part, you know, really, really don't have any bad memories about it at all, except 
when they asked me to mispronounce Colin O'Driscoll's name. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm Irish, and that's not the, it's not Colm. That is not the way you say it. <laughs> I told them this. A bunch of British guys said, well, you know, I think they're American, you know, they get everything wrong. Like, you know, no, they know how to pronounce it. He knows how to pronounce his own name. It's Colum, Colum O'Driscoll, just so you know. <laughs> oh, man, there's more people that play Red Dead than there are people in Ireland. <laughs> so more people are mispronouncing that name now than are pr pronouncing it correctly, and it's all Rockstar Games' fault. <laughs> I told them, and they didn't listen to me. So I, I'm throwing them under the bus every chance I get. They're a wonderful company to work for, but it's got them, you know, Driscoll, right? <laughs> So, um, it's well, a little bit. You? you first. Go ahead. It's a little bit of a spoiler, but um, after Kiri, after Kirian's death, is if you're right in the Bayou as Arthur, doesn't he like look back because he's scared of the Nightfold? I've heard that. Yeah, I, th I believe that's true. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I didn't notice it until I saw it on social media. But yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah, especially once the O'Driscoll stormed uh, that particular base. What was it called? Shady Bell, right? Shady Bell. Yeah, so once they, once they storm Shady Bell, uh, Arthur gets a little more nervous in, in, the, in, the, in the bayou. Yeah, definitely. I'm right up front. So I have a question. So, uh, maybe spoiler, but um, you know when, uh, when you're on the cliff and uh, you're um, dying, right? Do you know what Dutch or how, or Dutch or how you felt, or like what was your emotions as Arthur when you were on? When we did the scene, yeah, like when, what was Arthur's like emotions? Like what was he thinking? Well, you know, I it was a five-year contract, an amazing contract, and I knew very early on what Arthur's fate was going to be, but I didn't know the specific details. I mean, we had a very basic outline of what the story was going to be, but the writers didn't. They didn't restrict themselves by writing the whole thing out before we started, you know. They wanted, they went, it was smart too because they, they waited a while to see what strengths and weaknesses certain performers had and then that would, they would let that reflect their writing. So although we kind of had a basic skeletal view of what the story was going to be, we didn't get the pages for it until about a week or two before. And we didn't do Arthur's deaths until about almost towards like, it was about four and a half years in. So for four and a half years, I'm like, oh, what's my death scene going to be like? Then I find out there's going to be four death scenes, but <laughs> that's another story. But to, cut up, so to answer your question, I was very nervous. I wanted to get it right. And uh, when we finally did it, you know, it was, uh, it was very nerve-wracking for me. Because here I was saying goodbye to a character that I had been working on for almost five years. So uh, it was pretty intense. It was pretty serious. And I know for a fact, Ben was very, very upset, the guy who plays Dutch, Benjamin Byron Davis, he, uh, he had tears in his eyes, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he was bawling away as he was walking away. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a pretty intense day. And it was the high honor helping John was the first of the four death scenes that I did. Which I think is probably the best one, maybe the best canon one yes. anyway. But uh, the other three after that were a little easier. But that was the first one, and it was hard, yeah. Who else has questions? Right here in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, is it weird to like, and like just hear your voice and you're just like walking around? Is it like, what, what does it feel like? It's a little weird. <laughs> But I'll, it's different from like when you're watching yourself on film or hearing your voice, um, because Arthur doesn't look exactly like me. You know, he's, I'm, I'm a little bit better looking. <laughs> so, so there's enough uh, there's enough of a difference for me to be able to to have a bit of objectivity when I'm looking at it. But yeah, it's still a little weird. But I still use the same. I'm, I, I still use the same joke. I said, "Oh, I'm gonna go play with myself now." <laughs> <laughs> and my wife closed her eyes and says, "You've been saying that joke for almost ten years now." And I go, "Yeah, it's still funny." So high honor or low honor? Well, it's called redemption, right? I always go high honor, just because the bounty hunters don't bother you as much. 
You know, that's the beauty of it though. You can play it whatever way you want. Who else has a question? In the purple. What was both of your favorite scenes to do? Oh, I, I really think, I mean, there were so many that were so much fun. Like Roger said, when we were all together, those were definitely the most fun, I think. Uh, but probably when, when Arthur gives John his hat, that was such an emotional thing. That was at the very, in fact, that was the very last bit of motion capture that they, that they shot. So we've been doing this for four years at least at that point, right? And, and I say we, because I, I didn't work quite as long as Roger, uh, but I've been there for four years, whatever. So uh, you imagine the stage is about the size of this room, maybe a little bit bigger than this, but taller ceiling, whatever. But there are cameras all around. And uh, excuse me, I just spoke out, not even close to my mic. <laughs> there are cameras all around uh, that pick up the, you have reflective tape on the little markers, right? So um, if you have anything, if anyone is in their like, street clothes, if they have anything on that those cameras would pick up, they couldn't be on there. So they just didn't have really a whole lot of people on set, on the stage, that didn't need to be for that reason. Well, for that scene, there were probably, what'd you say? People. Everyone, yeah. everyone came down to watch it. All the people who were upstairs polishing off the footage and all the digital info that they garnered from the mocap, they all came down, didn't they? Yeah, and it was such a, you just could feel the, everybody had worked so hard at that point, and so many people still had so much more work to do, but for that being the end of that part of the production, it was, really emotional not only was it emotional because everybody works so hard but also what that scene meant and we all understood what that meant at that point that i'll never forget that that was really cool wow yeah absolutely that was something else yeah uh my favorite thing, i don't know what my favorite bit was i remember uh, was amazing, when you first go to valentine with uncle and some of the camp girls and uh, <laughs> There's a part where you have to rescue Karen, I think it is, from a guy who's you know, slapping her around and whatnot. And if you go into the wrong hotel room, there's a fella on the cracker. And uh, <laughs> that was mocap. That wasn't done in a booth, you know? So there was a, he was wearing, was wearing spandex, but he sat on a, a pipe mesh thing resembling a toilet. And I, you know, we would, he would go, uh, action! So I'd wait a while for him to start making the appropriate noises, you know, and then I'd come in through the door and I'd just start laughing. <laughs> I couldn't get through, that took a long time to get through that one. He's like, oh, because, and then of course we had to do it as if Arthur kept going in and out, you know, because sometimes that's the, what the player's going to do. So he's like, I can't a man do this in peace, for God's sake, leave me alone. <laughs> Sorry. So was the bar scene with Lenny also? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were doing the can can and you know, we had some mats on the floor when we were mud wrestling each other and that, yeah. I had no idea that mission was gonna be as successful as it was. It's funny what happens, you know, but yeah. That was all mo kept too, yeah. More questions. In the green. Uh, <clears throat> maybe a two part question. Number one, have you had any of the Kentucky bourbon? Kentucky bourbon? Yeah, but I'm pretty partial to Angel's Envy, man. It's pretty Woo! good. Yeah. All right, and the second part is, uh, how did you guys, I don't know anything about this whatsoever, so how did you guys get your start, and what made you want to do that? Get Start just in general in acting? Yeah, or, or in Red Dead, or in acting, or in general. Yeah, all right. I, uh, when I auditioned for Red Dead, I didn't have any idea that I was auditioning for a video game at all. Oh, I, I was sent by uh, an agent that sent me out for commercials. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I t I, the agent didn't know what it was for, but I thought, yeah, all right, I got an audition, I'm gonna go. And so I went and it turns out it was for Red Dead Redemption. But so as far as getting into uh, video games, I had, I had no idea what I was even trying to get, you know? So, <laughs> 
but then kind of also acting in general, I, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> and, uh, I, I moved to LA just to see what would happen and, and I had some luck. So um, Roger's got a very different story, but I just, honestly, I didn't know. I thought, why not? I'm gonna try it. What, if it doesn't work out, I'll move back home. But, so uh, it's kind of my story. He's got a very different story. I never ended up in LA. Uh, you know, I, I, I get offered a work, I'll go there, I guess. But I started out in theater. I went to drama school in the UK and I started out in theater. And um, that's a great way to learn acting, I think, because the audience are right there. They'll teach you, you know, if you listen to them and if you make them listen to you, that's, I think, one of the better ways to, to get the basics. And you can transfer those skills to any other medium, including performance capture and voice acting, for that matter. So. I started doing voice acting in the UK, and then uh, that brought it, that, that kind of evolved into video games, and then doing the mocap for video games. So by the time I was in New York, my agent knew that I liked mocap, and she saw the breakdown. She didn't say what it was for, but it just said motion capture. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll try that. And they asked for a cowboy accent to wear boots. I was like, oh, that's funny, because I was just, I just finished playing Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> Pure funny. chance. It was the weirdest thing, too, because I had taken a huge hiatus from gaming. And then I finally picked up an Xbox 360 and got through Red Dead Redemption, and a month later was my first audition for Hardcore. That's, that's cool. So what's it like being a fan and then being part of the story? Well, I, I was, I was a bit... It was a double-edged sword, because you know, the, you know all the ins and outs of the story, and... You know, you, you get the vibe of what the main theme is and, you know, what, what the general gist of the game is and how Rockstar games are, because I was a huge GTA fan as well. But then the other side is, is that it's a bit of pressure, you know? I was like, I gotta live up to John Marston, you know? And, <laughs> and uh, really on, I realized, I, you can't, you can't live up to, you gotta, you can't help John Marston, John Marston. So, I was like, okay, just do your own thing and just, you know, just serve the story, just serve the story. Who else has a question? In the gray. Uh, well, actually not a question, just a comment. Uh, I understand that you guys are both fathers, so I just wanted to wish you a happy Father's Day. Aww. Aww. Thank you. Thanks very much. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Hey. Good stuff, guys. Hey. Thank you. In the front, right here. So speaking of uh, GTA and Rockstar Games, we've seen John's lineage in uh, GTA before. Can we hope to see maybe Arthur return in the future for hopeful genealogy? No idea. Oh. No idea. Okay. Yeah. And even if I did have an idea, I would say I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so take from that what you Honestly though, speaking as a fan, more Red Dead further on down the road, but I don't I think it might be a while. I don't know. I'm, I'm, my guess is genuinely as good as yours. But the fact that you guys want there to be another one means the world. Right here in the blue. Hey, uh, speaking of games, if you were to envision Red Dead 3, would you want it to be a prequel or a sequel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if a sequel would work, because then you're kind of getting into World War I territory, aren't you? And that's not really prime westerns. So I guess, they, I don't know. Either the same time or previous. But the thing is, if you keep going back in time, the weapons will start going to get worse. And nobody wants that. You want cool guns, right? Yeah, so that's a good question. But I, I think if, you know, a lot of people say, oh, we should pick up a jack. And like, yeah, that would be a cool story. We'd love to see how it went. But like, now we're getting into like 1920. And the Western, I think the Wild West is pretty much gone by then. So I don't know. See, I want to see any Western. Yeah, that could be cool. The origin of the Vandalin gang, yeah. That would be cool. But they better do it quick, though, because 15 not, year old John doesn't sound like me. <laughs> we're not getting this younger. <laughs> I can't run like a 15 year old either. <laughs> <laughs>
feel to know that from the age of like eight years old to 31, you made so many people cry their eyes out at the end of the video game? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what does that feel like? You, are you super proud of how well it turned out, how well you got back to it? And like, because I've never cried in a video game. Like, what's the point of in my life? And that got me. Like, I was, oh, it got me back. So. <laughs> It's truly a blessing, man. And that appreciation it just blows me. That's the whole reason. We, it's the reason we did it. You know, is to be, is to, is to have an audience that appreciated the work. And the fact that you guys appreciate it so much means the absolute world. I still have to. My arms are black and blue sometimes from pinching myself. I, uh, you know, it's beyond my wildest dreams. I, 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 I'm so thrilled that you guys like what we do. Love it. And it, it really did take a village, too, guys. I mean, I know there's only two of us up here now, but there's literally thousands, thousands and thousands of people made that game happen. And a lot, a lot of animators and engineers and designers and writers that you maybe never even have heard of. And, uh, and each and every single one of them was a very important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Well, and, and you as well, because yeah. you played the game how you wanted to. So you really added a lot to your own experience, right? Yeah, I bought it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it three times. Right. Yeah. It's, I think it's amazing how Rockstar can do as much as they know to do, and they do it really, really well, but they also give players so much freedom. Yeah. And somehow it still works where everyone's like, That's, that, I really love that. Like if, you give me too much freedom, I'm going to ruin the game myself. <laughs> <laughs> but they do. I mean, they do it in a way where you have a really well-written story, but you also have the freedom to go do so many cool things, and it works. It's really awesome. Good luck. Have you ever had an You know, oftentimes if they had no lines, we would stand in for other characters. Yeah, absolutely. That happened a fair bit, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you stood at your own grave. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, Mary Lynn. I was Mary Lynn. And she's standing by Arthur's grave. That's me. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And I'm Swanson for a few times. I'm Swanson at the very beginning with the snowstorm. And I was going through the snow and I... He had, Sean Haberly had already done the lines and they played them in the studio and I was just, <laughs> you know, that happened a lot, that happened a lot, you know, uh, whenever there was a big crowd scene, we would always just be some random in the background, yeah, it happened a lot. And wolf monsters. That's right. <laughs> now when you see those, you go to the More wolfish. In the Gryffindor room. Yes. Um, do either of you have favorite uh, gun of choice? I remember when we were mo capping it, I preferred the Catalan because it has a shorter, it was very well balanced for, we got pretty good at gunslinging, didn't we? Yeah, well, you guys did. Better uh, Peter Blumquist, who plays Micah, he was the best. But his, his, his holsters were inverted, so he would pull them out like that, and then a bit like Ben Foster from. I intend to Yuma. That character was inspired Micah a lot. He's got the same kind of jacket, you know. But yeah, we got pretty good. I like the Cattleman because it's the it's easier to pull out of the holster fast, and it's well balanced. But uh, yeah, I think I like the Cattleman. But in game, I don't know there are better guns than the Cattleman. But that's the old reliable for me. I did, honestly, I've played enough to know, but I do remember in. Red Dead Redemption, there was the Gatling gun. Or, yeah. I, got to, yeah. I got to mo cap that. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> that was in Mexico, wasn't it? Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, I remember yeah. playing that. So, what'd you name your horse? My horse's name is Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Probably something stupid like Tuesday or, you know, <laughs> Riddle. Man rides his horse into town on Tuesday, and then the next day he leaves on Friday. <laughs> How's that pop? My horse's name is Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> probably did some stupid. I saw one guy, he, it was shortly after the game came out, he was very unhappy. He left a very bad review of the game. One of the few reviews I read that were bad. 
And excuse my language, but the reason why he didn't like the game is because he couldn't name his horse Shit Factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He really wanted to name that horse Shit Factory. <laughs> Some of them were not okay, <laughs> like the, that, that pig farming couple, <laughs> that fella in the, out in the middle of the swamp just by himself, who's <laughs> real friendly, <laughs> and then you just wake up. <laughs> but the sun worshiper, he'd be cool. I mean, yeah. that guy was cool, he was yeah. happy. Yeah. He just yeah. wanted to be in the sun. That fella looking for Gavin was pretty funny. Right. Yeah. Gavin! 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 Have you seen my friend Gav? Thank you for saying that. Um, I guess you know when you're working for Rockstar Games, you know that you're part of something really special. There's no doubt about it. So um, I think when they did Red Dead Redemption, they were pretty nervous about it because it was a whole different thing. They knew they had the success, obviously, in Red Dead Auto, but Red Dead was really taking a leap for them. And I'm so glad that it worked out for them. And, of course, I'm glad that it worked out for them because I get to share that really awesome experience. But uh, you know, I don't, I don't know enough about games, honestly. And I definitely didn't then. You know, they kept talking to me about GTA, and they were like, "You know, GTA when this happens and this happens." And I kept saying, "Yeah, I know," because I wanted, <laughs> I wanted them to think that I was a gamer. <laughs> and then finally, one of them was like, "You don't play video games, do you?" <laughs> No, and I really hope that's okay. And they're like, yeah, that cool. All right. <laughs> you didn't. Man, you didn't get any of these references. Right? <laughs> they're awesome people. But uh, I, I think, it, like I said, when you work for Rockstar Games, you know you're doing something special. You, you do. They're great. So. All the way in the back in the red and the hat. Could name off, uh, if anything, uh, how Red Dead has influenced your everyday life. 
<laughs> Do people talk to you and they're like, oh, I know that voice, like, you see it on their face? No, I don't know. I'm from a really small town, so I think most people that... <laughs> So my wife, my wife wanted chickens again, and I said, yeah, but you can't. That's my coop now. <laughs> so now we have two chicken coops, one for me and one for all the chickens. <laughs> and I might be the only one in the world who has two chicken coops. But that's what it is. I love it. Have you decorated the chickens coop the same way? No. Well, no. So... <laughs> Chicken's Coop was named by um, a fan online, and it's called Cluckingham Palace. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a sign. It's really great. Uh, the support is pretty overwhelming. Do your chickens have names? Well, uh, yeah, they're all British. These <laughs> <laughs> are my wife's chickens, I, and uh -huh. she loves them, and she takes care of them. I just built the chicken coop, but uh, yeah, it's like Victoria. Um, Pippa, they're all the like royal, except for uh, what's the Spice Girl that was uh, the, the, Dave Beckham's Victoria. wife, Victoria. 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 That's right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's her thing. I just I stay out of the way. Right here. So uh, I know you guys talk a lot about the motion capture, and you guys seem to have fun with it. Um, but like, as technology grows and that slowly becomes obsolete, are you going to be like happy to not have to physically do all that? Or is it like, are you going to miss it? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah, so uh, what happens as the technology advances? Well, I've been doing it for 15 years, over 15 years I've been doing PCAP, and I think they're always going to need actors, but our work is getting easier and easier, and we're allowed more and more freedoms, and it's taking less and less time to do the same things. So personally, I, I love it. I think they're always going to need us, but uh, we get a lot more done a lot more quickly now because the technology gets better. But it's been fascinating to behold. I remember my first mocap for a video game. You know, a simple shot would take half an hour, sometimes an hour, just to set up before you even started. Now it's just a matter of seconds, you know. And uh, it, you know, it, what we you've all seen the latest Avatar, right? So that's been groundbreaking in a lot of ways because they did a lot of underwater mocap for that movie. So it's, for me, it's, I love that stuff. And it was really, really interesting to see. Uh, I don't know what's coming in the future, but I can anticipate that pretty soon we're going to be able to do mocap without it having to be in a studio, you know? 
or without the balls, <laughs> or the balls will get smaller, so small that you might not even be visible. And people like for Marvel, for, it, for instance. And you got Mark Ruffalo mocapping as the Hulk next to live action performers. I could see in the future maybe one day where that mocap suit won't be necessary, or there'll be a, a, a much simpler and easier version of it, where you'll have mocap characters standing right next to live action. We're already seeing that, but I could just see it becoming easier and easier and easier. <laughs> I, I like Charles. I like Charles Smith. He's awesome. <laughs> Charles, Sadie, I did a lot of work with Charles and Sadie, and they're both awesome. But all, I mean, all of them are, you know? And it's it's hard to say, too, because we all have become real friends, you know, in real life, the people that played these roles. It's, I think everybody did a great job. Everybody really enjoyed the work that they were given and tried their hardest. And so it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I love them all, and, and they're all, like I said, real friends. That's so cool. All the way in the back. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite and least favorite chapter in the game? Favorite and least favorite chapter. I played through chapter one, and I'm terrible, <laughs> terrible at it. So I can't. I don't know. One is my favorite and my least favorite. Is <laughs> <laughs> it all the smell? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Six, six is pretty depressing. Uh, it's got a lot of epic missions in it, but it's pretty depressing. I think my favorite chapter is maybe three or four, because that's before all the bad stuff really starts to get going, and you can still explore the whole map. So maybe three or four, maybe three, because Sean's still alive. <laughs> Spoiler. No, 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 no. <laughs> I could have told you that. In the white. Oh god, it's not a dog fairy. I am a dog fairy. I just told you that. Yeah, I'm always doing audiobooks. Yeah, I've done quite a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I keep just keep plugging away at it. And uh, it thrills, yeah, uh, I'm so thrilled that you enjoyed it. Fame Pursuits, the next book in that series, just came out about a couple weeks ago. It's available on Audible. Uh, I'm sure we're going to keep at it. Now, um, yeah, yeah. If you like, you guys go on Audible, search my name, you'll find a whole spiel of stuff. But most of it is in the voice that you, you know, become accustomed to. Uh, I also do Irish books and British books and all that stuff too. Yeah, been doing it a long time. I started off as a little kid. My dad, my dad used to record newspaper for the blind, and we would put, we could record six cassettes at one time back in the '80s, and I would help him cut out little newspaper articles from the Star Ledger. He would record them once a week, and I, I would help him when I was like five, six years old. So. That's the way I guess I carried on in my dad's footsteps. Yeah, audiobooks. I was, I was doing nothing else during COVID, so yeah, I, I enjoy it very much. In the plaid. Who do you want to take our jobs? We always get hazardous a lot. Sorry, go finish your job, sorry. Troy and uh, in Last of Us, and that was great and all that, but 
you know, the original cast that actually makes you fall in love with the franchise in the first place, a lot of them are getting ignored by these TV casting directors, and for the life of me, I don't understand why. You know, uh, I think a lot of people, again, don't realize that you know, we, we actually did it. You know, we weren't in a booth reading off of a script like so many people still think. We did it for real. It was in spandex, but we did it for real. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't, as a fan myself, you know, there's a lot of adaptations that have yet to come out. I know God of War is being done at Amazon. I know Ghost of Tsushima is happening. And, yeah. you know, I. I would like to see the original cast get, get more, get acknowledged more with these adaptations because they've already demonstrated themselves, you know? Uh, to, to me, it's a no-brainer. I mean, we are. Everyone likes to have fan castings and whatnot, but, you know, we, we work pretty hard on Red Dead. We're not ready to give it to just to some A-lister who just woke up and went, oh, I guess I'll do a video game adaptation. <laughs> We're not better or anything, but you know, <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's the way I feel about it. I would love, I would love to see more of the original cast get seen for this sort of stuff and get them, let them carry on with the adaptation. But you know, sometimes it doesn't work though, because sometimes they look nothing at all like their characters. So I can understand that, you know. But um, I think well, Red Dead would have to be a TV series. I don't, I don't think two hours would cut it. No. 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 Barely cover chapter Maybe one. Not. But I don't know if Rockstar will ever do it, though. You know, they've never, apart from Max Payne, but that was before they bought it and the movie rights were already. They, I don't know if they're ever going to have the, the rights for it. I don't know. We'll never say never, but I just don't see it happening. They like making video games and they don't like releasing control of their IPs, so who knows? Would you play John again? Oh, yeah. I have to. I would. <laughs> and I, yeah, I mean, it would, it would be really, really cool to have an opportunity to do it. I love the character and had a really awesome time working with everybody I got to work with. So, in a second. Yeah. They wait much longer, we'll be too old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No teenagers, huh? <laughs> Can't play teenagers. I think that's a good place to wrap. I think we're kind of at the end here. We're at the end of Popcorn's Louisville as well. So, wow, thank you so much, Rob and Roger, for coming. Come on over to our table. Have some face. Have some face. You told on me. You told who?